Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So, this is lecture on Janmashtami, August 18, 1995, spoken by Srila Gurudev. And Gurudev is explaining that in the Hari Bamsa there is a description of the appearance of Krishna and Gopal Champu uh, is written by Srila Jiva Goswami. There is also a description of the appearance of Krishna, Gopal Champu. Gurudev says, when, what I say, I will recite Gopal Champu and I have to speak in two languages, first in Ariya, then in English. In this way, so I request one and all to sit patiently, uh, quietly, and hear with concentrated attention, because the hearing of this transcendental lila, this kahani of Bhagavan Krishna, is most auspicious, especially on this day. So Gurudev always would do like that when we were fasting, especially, and when Gurudev was speaking in front of um, mixed crowd you can say, right, Western devotees and local devotees. So Gurudev would always say, I have to speak in two languages. So everyone, be patient, just relax. Basically, that's how I used to get Just sit down, you're, you're here for a while, you know, open your heart, your mind, be patient, tolerant, don't be disturbed, uh, be quiet, uh, quiet your mind, and just nicely try to hear this transcendental sound vibration. Uh, this description of Krishna's uh, kahani, transcendental lila, this is most auspicious. And Gurudev explains that the Bhagavad says to hear this transcendental lila, uh, this kahani of Bhagavan Krishna is all auspicious. And if you hear, putting full faith and attention, then all contaminations. All material contaminations that are there within your heart, everything will be cl- will be cleansed up, cleaned up. Your heart will become purified. No other means is there. So remember, we were saying the other day, we got so many problems. Everyone's got a problem. This problem, that problem, this problem, that. Good. He says, there's no other means. It's the same. It's always the same solution. Just patiently sit down. Try to be quiet. Try to hear attentively. Uh, this transcendental lila, the pastimes and instructions of Krishna, putting full faith and attention to that kata, then all the contaminations, all the material contaminations, and everything that's disturbing us there in the heart and the mind will be cleaned up. The heart will be purified, and no other means is there. This is the only means. So this is the, the benefit, one of the many benefits of hearing about Krishna especially on this day. So therefore, Bhagavan Sri Krishna, he descends here. Uh, though Bhagavan Krishna has his eternal abode there in the spiritual sky, known as Satchit Ananda Maya Dham, hmm, which is full of eternal, into eternality, full of knowledge, and full of blissfulness. He's always engaged there, completely absorbed there in this transcendental lila. Uh, this lila especially uh, is Ras Lila. He enjoys the Ras Lila there and he relishes that mellow. Why will he come here to this material? If he's enjoying in the Ras Lila, right, why will he, why will he come to this place, which is Tukali Mashaswatam, temporary miserable place? Why will he leave that place and that dance, right, and that activity, and come here into this hellish place, really, this is the Durga, uh, Durga Dham, right? This is the prison house. So Gurudev says, why you come here? Uh, coming from Ras Lila, he's enjoying that mellow. Why will he come to this material world, uh, which is not his Dham, it is completely opposite. The transcendental Dham is Satchidananda, uh, Maya Dham. This material world is Asit, Achit, Nirananda Maya. It is temporary place. It's full of ignorance, full of misery, 
Why will he come here? What business does he have to come here? Why? Because Krishna is Suridam Savabhutanam. He is the only well-wishing friend of all the living entities. And he has said that thing in the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, so we said that, uh, that unless Krishna comes here, we're rotting here in the material world in complete forgetfulness. So unless Krishna, uh, Krishna's devotees come, they're Suridam, Krishna's Suridam Savabhutan, I'm well wishing friend of all the living entities. There's no, there's no chance of us getting out of this, this place, this Maya Dham. So Gurudev continues, uh, You have forgotten Krishna from time immemorial and you are under the clutches of Maya. But Krishna, he has not forgotten you because he is our well-wishing friend. He always runs behind you. He is there in your heart as Paramatma. He never deserts you. And it is says in it is said here, this material world, this Dham, uh, with his associates, many incarnations is to it is sends also this is the one of the special trans, translations there. Hmm. So we're forgetting Krishna and not forgetting us. You say there's a little bit of both going on. Right? You're ignoring, he's ignoring you. But Krishna's actually not ignoring us. We're ignoring him. Because the second we don't want to ignore him, he's right there. You see? Manifesting himself. So he's always running behind you. To explain, uh, we take one step towards Krishna, he's taking ten steps towards us. He's there as Paramatma. Uh, so close. He never deserts. Never, never will desert you. Uh, also, he sends his associates, many incarnations. Also, uh, they manifest uh, this transcendental lila. Uh, so they come and they perform these transcendental lilas here, Krishna, Krishna devotees, uh, and it is recorded. The lila kahani is recorded within the books. And his dear devotees, uh, Sadhu, Vaishnava, Bahajans, they will come and they will recite and they'll speak. So Krishna comes, he performs his pastimes with his dear devotees, and then those pastimes are then recorded in the hearts and the minds and in the books. Uh, and then those Sadhu, Vaishnava, Guru, then they speak uh, about Krishna's pastime. In this way, Krishna is manifesting personally. He's manifesting in terms of his lilas. And then he's, his devotees are also manifestations and uh, empowered to speak this Hari Kata, Krishna Kata. So Krishna enters into the transcendental sound vibration and this way purifies our consciousness and attracts the living entity, uh, which is in complete darkness, forgetfulness of Krishna. Uh, once we become purified, we realize we're eternal servant of Krishna then we can turn our attention back towards Krishna uh, and want to render loving service. So this is how Krishna does this out of compassion. The Suridam Sava Bhutanam. He comes here and acts these pastimes. Gurudev many times explained on this uh, Krishna's appearance day that he's nicely enjoying there. But he's coming here to enact his pastimes uh, so that we'll be attracted by it. We'll be purified and then attracted by Krishna's pastimes. Otherwise, there's no way to get out. Gurudev says, you're all drinking the filthy drain water here in the material world, and you're thinking it is Amrit, you're thinking it's nectar. So unless Krishna comes and enacts these wonderful pastimes, sweet pastimes between him and his dear devotees, uh, and unless that is... Uh, Recorded, unless it is spoken by his devotees, and how the living entity will become attracted. So this is the trick, how Gurudev explained how Krishna puts some sweet milk into your dirty, filthy drain water, and in that way begins to purify you and then attract you to some higher, nicer, sweeter taste. So if Krishna does not come, then how will we ever know about it? 
If Krishna doesn't come or Krishna doesn't enact his pastimes here or Krishna doesn't send his devotees here into the material world, we're already in complete darkness here. We're already in complete forgetfulness even of our own souls. What to speak of the Supreme Soul, but to speak of our relationship with Krishna. So Krishna does it as Suridam Savabhutanam, well-wishing friend of all living entities. And he comes out of his compassion because we're in the dense darkness here in the material world, complete forgetfulness. So in this way, Krishna starts to uh, purify us by hearing these pastimes, uh, wakes us up with the transcendental sound vibration, then we can begin to realize that we're eternal servants of Krishna, and then we can begin to be attracted by these pastimes of Krishna, and not the so-called pastimes of living in the deep, dark well in the material world, which we're taking as so nectarian, but it's really filthy drain water, but we're like, oh, it's not so bad. It's not so bad. Could be worse, right? Mm. So we need to be attracted. Mm. And this is why Krishna, Gurudev is explaining, this is why Krishna comes, his devotees come, and they enact these pastimes, and then the devotees speak about these pastimes. They recite and then they speak, they preach, and then this will be heard, and this will be read, this will be uh, meditated upon and deliberated upon by all. Uh, so everyone will digest it and begin to understand it. Uh, thereby, he will get uh, peacefulness. He will become peaceful and blissful. His heart will become cleansed and then he can understand uh, what is your constitutional position. So we just, I just said that, isn't it? By hearing those pastimes, uh, we become purified in our heart and consciousness. We realize what is our constitutional position, that we are the constitution. Our constitutional position is that we're eternal servants of Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna is our eternal master. And all uh, Krishna, uh, Krishna comes here to play with his devotees, his dear devotees, to relish his uh, Leela Ras, transcendental Leela here. And he then gives you also an opportunity to relish it. So this is the point. He's always relishing. But he wants to come here and, and relish it with us. He wants us to also relish with him in these transcendental pastimes. Moreover, Gurudev says, he comes here uh, to protect his devotees. Sadhunam, what is it? Parachanaya sadhunam, manishaya chitaskritam. So, he comes to protect his devotees, to give his devotees pleasure. Uh, that purpose also, Gurudev says. Hmm. Gurudev says, uh, now I will read from Gopal Champu. This uh, is nice, this is a nice song form. And I will sing. I want you to follow it with me. This is nice to sing it. And it's all in... It's uh, Bengali, isn't it? Yes. Huh? It's in Bengali. So Gurudev says that in this Gopal Champu, there are two poets. Uh, what is it? Shrigna Kanta and Madhu Kanta. Right? Huh? Snigda. I don't know who did this uh, translation here. Snigda. We're going to have to... We're going to need some special mercy here. This might have been done by our friend from England, if you know what I'm saying. Snignakanta and Madhukanta. Uh, and they sing songs. Uh, so the singers in the assembly of Nanda, Nanda Maharaj, uh, one day they started singing how uh, Nandaraj, how he'll get a son. And Nandaraj, he performed many sacrifices. Still, the son was not born. And all the residents of Brajabhumi, all of his friends, all they also took up some, uh, some vows, some vratas, uh, to worship for Nanda Maharaj in order that he may have a son. And still, no son 
was coming. Uh, Jasomati, the wife of Nanda Maharaj, was very much in distress and she gave up eating and always she was sitting, hanging down her face and only shedding tears. So she couldn't have sun and she was just crying, crying, crying. Everybody was praying. Nanda Maharaj was doing sacrifices, praying, they're doing everything. Still no sun was coming. Uh, Jasomati, uh, she gave up all of her eating and just sitting and crying. And seeing this condition of his wife, Nanda Maharaj became very much distressed uh, and started to console her in various ways. Uh, what is the will of providence that will take place? She st they tried to preach to the wife, isn't it? It's, you know, whatever is the will of providence uh, that must take place. And his wife, Jashoda Mata, said, My dear husband, I will tell what I thought of in my heart. I performed many sacrifices, I took up many vows, many vratas, but I have not done the Dharasi Paramavrata. And hearing this, Nanda Maharaj became very happy and said, yes, very good. We have not done that one yet. Uh, so we must do it. And Nanda Maharaj called his priest uh, and asked him, what is the procedure, what are the rules, what are the regulations for this Dwarasi Vrata? And the priest, he said everything. Then they decided we should observe this Vrata uh, and then they took this Vrata, they took this vow. So this is the yogini's visit. Nanda Maharaj and Josamati Rani observed the Vrata for one year. At the end of the Vrata, <coughs> Nanda Maharaj had a dream. Lord Hari appeared and being very pleased with him said, Your desire will soon be fulfilled. In every kalpa I come as your son and in this kalpa I will also come as your son. I will manifest my babyhood Leela in your home and every day you will see my pastimes and you will be very, very happy. Then Nanda Maharaj, his sleep broke and it was morning and the birds were chirping. He decided to take bath in the Jumuna along with his wife, Jaswamati, and he took much wealth with him to give it all into charity, to give it in charity. All of the demigods, munis and rishis came in the guise of beggars to receive the charity from Nanda Maharaj. Nanda Maharaj and Jashoda Mati completed their bath then started giving charity. Everyone became very pleased to receive the charity from Nanda Maharaj and they all loudly shouted, Nanda Maharaj Ki! And Jasoda Mantirani Ki! Then Nanda Maharaj returned home, offered worship to Bhagavan Vishnu. After finishing his daily activities, he came to his assembly and offered respects to worshipable personalities such as his gurus and brahmanas. So Snignakanta's narration continued. Just then the gatekeeper came and informed Nanda Maharaj that a brahmacharini had come and hearing this he stood up and welcomed her, offering her a nice seat. Nanda Maharaj washed her feet and worshipped her. Jashoda Mata began crying at the feet of the brahmacharini Tapasvi, the aesthetic, took Jashoda Mata onto her lap and putting her hand on Jashoda's head, blessed her, saying, My dear Queen, very soon a nice son will come and take birth. And hearing this, all of the cowherd men and the women said, Nanda Rani Ki! <laughs> and when Nanda Maharaj's brother, Upananda, heard the news, he became very joyful and he, and he said, this Gokul forest will be a great place of pilgrimage, Mahatirtha. And hearing the Brahmacharini's prophecy, all of the inhabitants of Brajabhumi became very joyful. They all came and they offered Dandabhak Pranams at the feet of that Yogini, the Brahmacharini, and they built a cottage for her and she stayed there. Stingdakanta said, My dear brother Madhukanta now, Tell how Krishna came to the womb of Jashoda Mata. 
And Marukanda then spoke about this confidential truth. For one year, Nanda and his wife observed this Dharasi Vrata. Then on the night of the Krishna Patipat, the first day of the dark night of the month of Magh, Nanda Maharaj, he had a dream and he saw a baby child with a blue complexion moving in the sky and then he saw a girl with a golden-hued bodily complexion. The two of them entered into Nanda Maharaj's heart. So in the dream, they entered into Nanda Maharaj's heart. Then they came out of the heart of Nanda Maharaj and entered into the womb of Jashoda Mata. In this way, Jashoda Mata became pregnant. Hearing this news, all of the gopis and the gopas became very, very blissful and happy and every day they had grand festivals on account of Jashoda's pregnancy. Nanda Maharaj gave much charity to the brahmanas and the Vaishnavas. Many persons were coming and going to Nanda Maharaj's house. Who all of those persons were, no one could say. Among them, some demi-goddesses were also coming. So after eight months of pregnancy, an astrologer told them, on the eighth day of the dark fortnight of the month of Bhadra, the child will take birth on a most auspicious titi. When this Bhadra, Krishnastami, the eighth day of the dark fortnight of the month of Bhadra came, the nurse said, the child will be born today. Immediately, a maternity home was prepared and decorated very, very nicely. Flower garlands were hung all over. Gates were also made out of various beautiful flowers. Expert nurses, they came to take care of the mother and the child. And the heavenly planets, all of the demigods, they became very joyful. Indra Dev was showering rain. On that day, everyone was drowning in an ocean of happiness. For the Supreme Lord was about to take birth. Are you joyful? Are you? Are you sure? Huh? You look miserable. Why don't you just be happy? Huh? You don't have to listen to your stupid mind. Pray for mercy on this special day. Right? What else can we do? Otherwise you'll miss the boat. You know what I'm saying? The day will be gone and you'll just be in the same slump. You know what I'm saying? Pray, cry. So on that day, everyone was drowning in an ocean of happiness. Huh? But the Supreme Lord was about to take birth. All of the gopis, they stayed awake that night. Hmm. But due to the influence of Krishna's yoga maya, they all fell asleep. When the child took birth, everyone was sleeping. Even Jashoda Mata was asleep. There was no pain in the delivery at all. Wouldn't that be great? No pain in the delivery at all. Hmm. Without any pain, Jashoda Mata gave birth to Krishna, the Supreme Personality. That child was Putra Ratna, a son like an invaluable gem. Okay. Exactly at the same time when Jashoda Mata gave birth to Krishna in Vrindavan, in Mathura, in the prison house of Kamsa, Devaki also gave birth to a child, and that is described in the 10th canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Lord Hari appeared in Mathura in a four-handed form. He had a crown on his head, and with his four hands he was holding a... Uh, Conch, uh, Shankar Chakra, Gada, Padma. Conch shell, a disc, a club, and lotus. Uh, Kanaka, Kundala, Karna. On his two ears there were golden earrings, and a bright effulgence was coming out of his body. Although it was dark and a cloudy night, by the infulgence coming from the body of Lord Hari, everything was illuminated. So just out of his body, it was like a big torchlight. And seeing this wonderful child, Devaki, paid obeisances with folded hands and offered prayers. Vasudev, her husband, immediately took bath. 
Uh, how could he take bath in the prison house? He was in the prison house. Gurudev says, how can he take bath in the prison house? He did so by meditation within his mind. Manasa snan. He took manasa snan. That doesn't mean you all start taking manasa snan now. All right? Barry, don't say I'm doing manasa snan, you know? Uh, also, in his mind, he observed a grand festival for the, birth, for the birthday of Lord Hari and gave away innumerable cows in charity to the Brahmanas and the Vaishnavas. So he did it all internally. Like Devaki, he also offered his prayers to Lord Narayan. And then Narayan told him, immediately take me to Braja Gokul, put me on the lap of Jashoda Mata. So hearing this, Vasudev was very, very happy by the wonderful will of Lord Hari, those who were guarding the prison, they all fell asleep. All of the strong iron doors and shackles opened and Vasudev was free to leave. Exactly at the same time when Vasudev was leaving, the prison of Kamsa, Jashoda Mata gave birth to a second child, a daughter. Hmm. When Vasudev came to the bank of the Jamuna, he saw there was a great flood. The water was very high and all of the land was inundated. And he thought, how can I cross it? Just then, Vasudev saw Mahamaya in the form of a she jackal crossing the Jamuna. So Vasudev followed her. Finally, he came to the quarters of Nanda Maharaj. And there he put his son on the lap of Jashoda Mata and took Jashoda's daughter with him. So hearing this, Nitakanta said, What is this? Jashoda Mata gave birth to one son and one daughter, and Vasudev took the daughter. What happened to the son? Marukan said, This is a very confidential matter. Jashoda Mata's daughter was Sakshat Yogamaya. By her potency, Yogamaya kept the son of Nanda hidden, and Vasudev could not see him. So Vasudev only saw the daughter, did not see the son of Nanda. He only saw the daughter. So the son of Nanda and Jashoda is Swayam Bhagavan and uh, the original Supreme Personality of Godhead. Ete chamsa kala pumsa krishnas tu bhagavan swayam. Nanda, Nandana Krishna, Jashoda Nandana Krishna is swayam bhagavan. And all of the avatars are his plenary portions or portions of his plenary portions, Amsa and Kala. So from the womb of Devaki came the four-handed form, Vasudev, who is Prabhava Prakash of Krishna. So he's, he's an incarnation, a Prakash of Krishna. Krishna has two types of expansions. Or expansions. Uh, Prabhava Prakash and Vaibhava Prakash. In the temporary category of Prabhava come the incarnations Mohini, Hamsa and Sukla. In the eternal category comes Danvantari, Vishabha, Vyas, Dattacharya, Kapila, etc. The Vaibhava Prakash are partially powerful. In this category comes Korma, Matsya, Nara, Narayan, Rishi, Varaha, Hayagriva, Prish, Prish, what is it? Prishnigarbha, Baladev, Yagya, Vipu, Satyasena, Ari, Vaikunta, Ajita, Bhaman, Sababoma, Vishabha, uh, etc. When Swayam Bhagavan Krishna comes, all of his portions and portions of the portions, the Amsa and Kala, all come within him. The son of Vasudev is Vasudev, a four handed form. Of, of the Lord. Vasudev uh, is a plenary portion of Krishna. So when Vasudev put his son on the lap of Jashoda, that Vasudev entered into the child Krishna who was already lying there. So it's the same personality, right? the expansion, he just entered back into the form of Krishna. Just as all the rivers flow down 
to enter into the ocean, similarly all the plenary portions and portions of the plenary portions of the Lord, they all come and enter into the original Lord. By the activity of Yoga Maya, Vasudev could not understand any of these things. So he was covered over by Yoga Maya, he could not understand it. Uh, just automatically happened. Right? You doing better? Huh? In the Hari Vamsa, it is described how Lord Hari simultaneously took birth in two places. He took place birth in two places. Uh, so Jashoda and Devaki both gave birth at the same time. It says in the eight month, eight months of pregnancy that is considered asam asampurna. It's incomplete. Right? It's supposed to be nine months, right? Right? So in the eighth month, it's incomplete. Jashoda and Devaki both gave birth at the same time. Just after that, Jashoda gave birth to a daughter, Yogamaya. Mahamaya is a portion of Yoga Maya and she was thus also there. Vasudev took away this Maha Maya and handed her over to Kamsa. Right? So Maha Maya was handed over to Kamsa. While Yoga Maya stayed hidden in Brajabhumi. Did you know that? So Yoga Maya stayed hidden and Maha Maya was handed over by Devaki, by Vasudev to Kamsa. In this way, it was declared that the eighth child was a daughter, not a son. Therefore, the Kamsa was cheated. So he was cheated with Mahamaya. <laughs> uh, so Madhukanta then said, when Jashoda Mata gave birth to Krishna, all of them were asleep. Everyone slept through the whole night. Even Jashoda Mata was sleeping through the pregnancy. Huh? Then in the morning, Lord Hari started crying. Huh? Gurudev says, Kwa, Kwa, Kwa. <laughs> Everyone woke up. Jashoda Mata also woke up. And then she saw her nice son was laying there right next to her. And seeing her, her wonderful, very beautiful son... Mother Jashoda completely drowned in an ocean of blissfulness. She just woke up and there was a beautiful baby, right? She could not think what to do. She was simply shedding tears of bliss and love. And from her breast milk was flowing. The newborn child was there in her lap. And Jashoda was very, very blissfully looking at him, just staring at him. Jashoda Mata's voice was faltering in joy. She could not speak anything and was simply shedding tears out of love. And up until that day, she had only looked at the sons of others. So Krishna always increases the intensity, doesn't he? She couldn't have a son, she couldn't have a child, right? So then the intensity builds up, right? Then she's not eating, She's just simply crying, completely depressed, right? And then Krishna comes. So Krishna's the, you know, he knows exactly how to do it to take you to one extreme to the other. <laughs> it says, without the darkness, how can you appreciate the sun, right? So sometimes in order to really get ecstasy, you got to go through so many other types of things first, right? So today... Jashoda Mata, she was looking uh, at her own son. Only up to that point, she had been looking uh, at the sons of others and saying, oh, she has a son, she also has a son, like that. Uh, now she's looking at her own son. And tears were pouring from her eyes, milk flowed from her breasts, her whole sari became uh, completely soaked. Again and again, Jashoda Mata looked at the beautiful, lotus-like, moon-like face of her son. So she just could not stop looking at her son. Hmm? All the nurses, the gopas and the gopis, they all awoke. 
hearing the crying and sound of the newborn child. So mother's crying, baby's crying, everyone else also woke up. Everyone came and they said, huh? Oh, it is not a daughter, it is a son. And Jashoda, she has given birth to a son. Everyone was very happy, very blissful. It was as if all of Gokul, Rajabhumi, had drowned in an ocean of blissfulness. All of the cowherd men, all the gopas and the gopis, they came running to Nanda Maharaja's quarters to see Jashoda's newly born son. So they were all involved in this. They're very close, right? They're all praying, doing vratis. When will Jashoda Mata finally have child? Uh, so the demigods were dancing in the heavenly planets. They were beating drums and they were singing. Hari 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 Bolo Hari Bolo Hari Bolo Hari Bolo Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare The fourteen planetary systems resounded with the sound of Hari Hari Bo Hari Hari Bo Hari Hari Bo Hari Hari Bo And the heavenly planets, all the Devanaris, the wife of the demigods, they were showering flowers. All of the gopas and the gopis were dancing and blissfully dancing, embracing one another with loving affection. They were all drowning in an ocean of happiness. Immediately, Nanda Maharaj, he took his bath, according to Vedic rites. He performed the purificatory ceremony for the childbirth the Jatta Karma Sangska. The Brahmanas, they came and they uttered uh, prayers for auspiciousness, the Swasti Vachana. And many musicians, they all came and they played various uh, varieties of musical instruments. Uh, you want to play in that musical band? Wouldn't that be nice? Not this one in Siberia, right? where everyone's drunk and drinking and throwing things and punching each other, right? Isn't it? It's not like that. Huh? Sounds of drums and kettle drums, other musical instruments resounded throughout the all of the three planetary systems. Everyone was completely filled with supreme happiness. Not Ananda, Maha Ananda. Maha Ananda. Huh? Maha Ananda, right? You feeling it? A little bit coming? Uh, Prithvi Devi, Mother Earth, uh, had been very, very distressed and overburdened by the demons. Now, the demons were to be killed, so she was happy. Okay, Krishna came, now he's going to kill the demons. Uh, she'd be relieved of all of her heavy burden. Krishna says, Paratranaya sadhanam Vanishaya chadashkritam. So Krishna comes, gives pleasure to his devotees, delivers his devotees, and kills the demons, destroys all the demoniac. Huh? So all of the sadhus, the Vaishnavas, the Dvijas, the Brahmanas, everyone was completely happy. When Nanda Raj came, all of the gopas and the gopis, they said, Nanda, uh, come. Come and see your beautiful son. Uh, it is as if innumerable moons have arisen in your house. So he was self-effulgent, innumerable moons. Uh, oh Nanda Maharaj, you have achieved perfection in this birth after a very long time. Many long years have gone, have gone past. Come and see your beautiful lotus-like face, the lotus-like face of your son. So the news, it spread throughout Gokul, Rajabhumi. All of the cowherd men, the cowherd women, they came running to Nanda's quarters. All of the cowherd men had sticks in their hands and on their shoulders they were carrying uh, some bags on both sides. Huh? As they were coming, they were dancing and dancing Everyone was saying, Oh Nanda, such excellent good fortune uh, has come to you. 
Ah, today there's an ocean of bliss, an ocean of blisses in your house now. So seeing the beautiful lotus-like face of his son, Nanda Maharaj was blissfully dancing in all directions, all of the cowherd men and the inhabitants of Gokul, they were also clapping their hands and blissfully uh, chanting and dancing. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. And the heavenly planets, the demigods, they were also dancing there. Uh, in the nether planets, in the hellish planets, Patala, the snakes were dancing. Even the snakes were dancing. Guru Dev used to say when Prabhupada was chanting, then all the, all the snakes would start dancing, right? <laughs> Charming the snakes. Uh, in the inner quarters, uh, Yasoda Rani, she was also dancing. Everybody dancing. That's the spiritual world. Every step is a dance, isn't it? Every word is a song. Hmm. Shiva was dancing. Brahma was dancing. Indra was dancing. They were all dancing. Are you dancing? Huh? Why don't you get up and start dancing? Come on. Jagopal, come on. Dance for everybody. No? No? You don't want to dance? Come on. You can do it. No? Okay. So they were, all <laughs> they were all dancing. Everyone was dancing. They were full of bliss. Huh? Unheard of happiness. All of the cowherd men, they came presenting, uh, giving all presentations of yoga, and turmeric, uh, gorochana, a kind of auspicious yellow pigment. Nandarani, the wife of Nandavraj, has acquired all good fortune, all auspiciousness for today. She has obtained Nilamani, the blue gem, Krishna, as her child. A blue gem uh, baby. Uh, not ordinary, Barry. Uh. Hmm. Shri Krishna Janmastaniki! Yeah.